Do you see these two ants? They are both built big and strong. These are two queens. This video will go about how I raised them. I caught these ants at the same moment a few meters from each other. Yet they are very different. They are both formicas. I know this because of their big eyes and the shape of their head. But one is much bigger than the other. How can that be? Well, that is because they are different species. The widest of the two is a Formica urifi barbis, a claustral queen ant. Claustral queens start their colony just on the energy reserves stored in her wing muscles. The founding process of these colonies is simply me putting this queen in a test tube with some water behind a cotton wall and waiting until she raises her first set of workers called nanitics. So waiting I did. Are you ready to see what the colony looks like now? Do you see this? She raised all of them on her own without any food. All our nanetics emerge, except the last one here. He needs a bit more time. These workers are crucial for colony survival. They will bring back the very first food this queen has eaten since her nuptial flight more than a month ago. But the second queen isn't claustral. It's a Formica sanguinea, also known as a blood red ant. Blood red ants are a parasitic species of ant. Even more exciting, they are slave makers. This means they can steal brood from other colonies and raise them to do their colony work. Luckily for me, blood red ants don't need these slaves to survive unlike some other species. Otherwise, it would be too difficult for me to keep them as an ant colony. So, a parasitic species. What does this mean for colony founding? A parasitic queen ant needs to invade a host colony by force in order to start her own colony. To do this, she will kill the original queen. This is a dangerous stage in the founding process. If she isn't fast or stealthy enough, the host workers will catch and kill her. A host for our blood red ants can be any other type of claustral formica species. The most common species in my area is formica fusca. So that is what I will be using. Ok, let's start this colony. I went outside and collected some formica fusca cocoons from a wild colony. Inside these cocoons are pupa, the latest state of larva before emerging as an adult worker ant. When these pupa emerge, the first thing they will smell will be our queen ant. This way we can skip the risky founding stage of a parasitic ant species. If you look carefully, you can see an ant that has just emerged. You can recognize him by the pale color of his exoskeleton that still needs to harden. I am going to take my queen that I placed in a test tube. At the end of the test tube is a piece of cork that half covers the opening to make the test tube more closed off. For the same reason I made a paper cover. When I put the test tube together with the brood, the queen will hopefully move them all inside. A few hours later, that's exactly what she did. She moved all the brood inside. It's time to let them rest and we will check up on them a few days later. It is 10 days later. Let's see how they are doing now. You see that? Most of the pupa have emerged. But where is the queen? Ah, there she is. Ooh, there are even some eggs. She's already laying. That's a good sign. This also means that they need their first meal. They will get a drop of raw honey and a small piece of raw chicken for the soon-to-be larvae. This all happened last year. I know the colony has grown a lot. I gave them a second test tube because they are running out of space. Yet this is just a temporary solution. They are very active and trying to scale the walls. 
This means they are seeking a bigger place. They need an upgrade pretty soon. Are you interested in an update for this colony? Or do you want to know what I have planned for my colony of Formica Rufi Barbis? If so, let me know in the comments down below.